After walking unceasingly for 31 years, Father Dr. Joseph Ambrosoli died here at Komboni Mission House in Ngeta, Lira Town on 27th March 1987. Father Joseph, Dr. This is the exact room where he was bedridden after grappling with kidney complications for over two years. Beato Giuseppe Ambrosoli espirato in questa stanza alle ore 13.50. Joseph Ambrosoli died in this room Friday 27 March 1 Fusirando. L'ultima frase the day he died, you know, he was supposed to be transferred to Mulago or something for the dialysis, you know, the problem was the kidney. Was, eh? So you were been waiting, waiting, and I reached at 2 o'clock. And, and the, uh, when we could see from here the helicopter lying down in, in the town, eh? they reached, reach. I, that moment it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon, he died. You, you see, oh. dedicated your life to The 64-year-old Komboni missionary priest had asked his superiors to delay his return to his hometown Como in Italy where he would be treated. He wanted to see if his midwifery and nursing students graduate after their final exams. He qualified as a doctor. Then his interest was to become a medical doctor for the tropical areas. So he went for tropical disease to, to do the course in tropical medicine in London. After finishing there, he came back to Italy and he decided to join the Comboni missionaries. And his interest was to come and work among local people, we could say the most needed, eh? needy, the most rural area, where medical services are very rare. On the 1st of Feb 1956, Ugandans welcomed a young Italian Combon missionary priest and Sergeant Dr. Joseph Ambrosoli to lead a Catholic parish of Kalongo located over 152 kilometers east of Gulu town, now Gulu Archdiocese. There was a, a dispensary started by uh, a sister, a Komboni sister in Kalongo, and he went to help to develop this dispensary, and it became a hospital. It is at this residence that Father Dr. Joseph Ambrosoli settled to offer his diligent service to the local communities. In 71, as we were going to Moroto as young seminarians, but that time I was in P, P6, we passed by a canal and uh, I saw a priest who was coming from the hospital but he came through the church. He entered the church, stayed a bit praying, and then came out 
went to the father's house. And uh, one of the priests who was then there in, uh, at Calon uh, mentioned that that was actually the father of Brozoli. As he was going back to his work in the hospital, he followed the same pattern. He did not go directly to the hospital, but he passed again through the church. And I believe he prayed a bit and then went uh, to continue his work. He used to hear from here uh, on foot with the rosary in his hands, moving to go near the parish church, coming back, going there with his rosary, praying the Holy Rosary not only once, two times, three times, and so on. In this parish church, he led mass, transforming the natives and redirecting them to God's direction, preaching about sacraments and many other instrumental Christianity qualities, including humility as an ideal fact of life. The core source of his kindness was the heart of Jesus. Jesus loved humankind to the level to die on the cross. In a number of occasions, he would just prepare a kind of an envelope. This is for you. I know that you need, because in that mission, uh, there's much more difficulty. You see, this kind of kindness was very common of his. He supported Kidgum Hospital. He supported this one. I mean, he was not the kind of a greedy person that it's only me and my needs. No, no. On the contrary, he would extend his, uh, his support as much as he could. And, and God bless him with means, you know, and with generosity to do that. In spiritual life, I try. I had the privilege to meet Dr. Father Ambrosoli when I was still a very young child. He came to celebrate the Mass as a priest as he was performing his duty. So I had the privilege to attend his Mass at that particular time. When I was still very young, for sure I really enjoyed his preaching because his preaching touches me as a young man, a young child, and we used to sit in front of the halter on the floor. So on that day, he came and preached about humility, how to be humble and how to serve. It was related to the, to the reading of the church on that Sunday. So I really felt very impressed. Then when I went back, I said, oh, what day I need to join? <laughs> my, my, my interest was to join a priestly wood because it touched me. What was special about him was his kindness, okay? His respect for the people and, he, and his humility because he was not a kind of a boss, okay, someone who just dictates. And though he was a doctor and a specialist and you name it, in terms of his preparation, he was very, very well prepared. He was very, very humble and kind to people and he never made them feel, you know, less or offended by anything he said. He was stressing more of all uh, that uh, you have to be kind to people, you have to be what? Well, you have to be compassionate to people, you have to be dedicated in your work. Because if you are dedicated in your work, you can uh, help, be able in position to help the needy. Before one speaks of uh, the wonderful preaching that one may be uh, presenting, coming up with. I think the proof of discipleship is first and foremost in humility. Uh, humility comes through um, opening or focusing your spiritual eyes on Jesus and contemplating his own humility and seeking to make it my own. With time, yes, it comes. He had a great love, faith, about Eucharist. You could see those who attend the Holy Mass, they really, they were impressed to see how much faith Father Ambrosoli used to celebrate the Holy Mass. I was an altar server. Every morning uh, before he goes to his work in the hospital, he would pass by the church 
uh, would say his mass very early in the morning. He goes to work in the hospital. He comes back and he has devoted a specific time where he can say his holy mass as a priest. So he was a person who was really loved, admired, and people trusted him so much as a doctor. And what I noticed about him is that he was a very committed doctor, he was a very uh, committed priest, and uh, her particular interest is that as a, a child growing up in the Paris of Calon, he inspired me also to join the seminary. I admired his uh, life as a priest, I admired his life as a doctor. I wanted to become a priest and also a doctor at the same time. Practically, he went to sleep after midnight, after midnight, and it was the first time to get up in the morning. The region had been infested with leprosy, which created desperate gaps between leper patients and local communities. Father Dr. Ambrasoli Memorial Hospital, Kalongo, found in the then small rural town of Kalongo, located on a plateau standing over 1,100 meters above sea level. He offered his life here, working with his own hands. He dug for stones and supported everyone, including the local communities, in making bricks just to ensure that the project, which would later save lives, takes off. One block after another, a dispensary that started in 1934 was transformed into a fully fridged operational primary healthy facility with 350 patients. We strongly do it with the mindset of the founder. We have endeavored to try to maintain a, mo a modest level of quality while remaining very sensitive to the needs of the less privileged, uh, the, the, the poor, the vulnerable, and the sick. And, and, and for us, I think by doing that, we keep the hopes and the dreams of the founder pretty much alive. The founder was a surgeon, and uh, it actually tells you why I'm also a surgeon. The, 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 the background, the backbone of this institution is surgical services. Father Dr. Ambrosoli Memorial Hospital Kalongo now serves over 231,000 people coming from Agago district who access services in maternity, pediatrics, medicine, surgery, gynecology, radiology and infective diseases. He was bringing things according to the needs. When he came, there was an operation. They needed a theater. So he started a theater. But I think they operated in a small room at the beginning. Because when he came, he had just come from Lacho when he was brought this way. That very day, uh, Sister Letta called him. There is a mother to be operated, to be helped. So he had to come. It was not easy, but he managed. The area was infested with many cases of malaria. The malnourished, the lepers and tuberculosis patients flocked the newly established facility. On the other side of the facility, a big number of patients waited in pain, some of them with prolonged illnesses, while others were wounded by hostile wild animals and needed immediate operations. The two first operations made by Father Ambrosoli were a man wounded by a lion, another operation, another man wounded by a buffalo. <laughs> Even though the situation was overwhelming, Father Dr. Ambrosoli did not despair. He could stay in operation theater there seven, eight hours without sitting down, without sitting down, really. And of course, his health was not a good health, at that, just at that time. People were coming from far away because he was very famous. And because of the faith that the people had in him, uh, even if he just touches them, they would feel that I have been treated by Dr. Ambrosoli. I have been... Uh, seen by Dr. Ambrosoli, 
and they would go back really satisfied. And most of them were healed. At the beginning, he used to give the priority to the difficult, very difficult operations. At the beginning, really, with the assistance of one doctor to doctor, with the assistance of some sisters also. Some sisters gave the cooperation, and really, after operating difficult operations, uh, 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 after six, seven hours, he could go on to other um, not difficult operations, and he was su succeeding, really. During my childhood, I heard that many people are coming from various parts of the world, including Somalia, Sudan, currently South Sudan. People could flock all here to get the service of this great man from Tanzania. Name them. They come and book here. And what tell us that he uses his professionalism to cure so many. Even through words alone, I could say, as people are saying, he was the best counselor. He just talked to you, you feel you are already healed. That, that was amazing to me when I was hearing when a child. To those who were treated, the memories are still fresh. What my mother told me, she had lost hope. But when Dr. Ambrosoli prayed before doing the operation and counseling her, giving her all the hope, she believed she could really survive. And indeed, my mother survived the operation. It was critical. The list is endless. You are the doctor and the priest who preached the gospel of salvation to the poor, to the patient and to Faith of the people in the healing powers of Father Ambrosoli knew no limits. In him, they saw a gifted doctor priest. In the collective imagination of the people here, Father Joseph Ambrosoli became a man of God with unique qualities and approaches to heal. This beautiful building you are seeing there, that was his real theater where he used to operate from. Now, we had another big, behind me there, a big theater. Now this one, they're transformed to investigation place, laboratory. So this tells us that many of us are trying to follow his footsteps. The Italian Comboni missionary priest had professional abilities that reached humankind. He attracted crowds of patients in the needed communities of Acholi and Lango sub-regions at a time when Uganda was just yearning for independence. There were very few medical facilities in Uganda, particularly in that area. Now, imagine a, doc a well-trained doctor with very limited facilities. He left all the comfort he, he could have had elsewhere, but as a missionary, he chose to stay with the people who are so vulnerable and, of course, his own life would be in danger because there would be no facilities, medical facilities for him also. But he stayed with the people uh, and, uh, most of his time. And, and you, you, from what I've read, including a few people who have met him, uh, he, he totally gave himself to the, to the cause of other people and his dedication to each one of the patients, you know. Very often, we were in times of war here for a number of years, as you know, and when they brought these people, probably wounded and so, and uh, the, the, sometimes the first thing, uh, uh, just to save time and so on, hassle, is, you know, you amputate that leg, okay? <laughs> uh, you amputate that arm. No father would really struggle rather to heal 
for months probably, uh, instead of having that person lose a limb. And you have many, many cases of people who come and tell me now, look, Father, this leg, I should have lost it. Look at the way it is. In fact, the wounds are still there, the visible scars of the wounds, I mean. Uh, but they say, but Father Ambrosoli endeavored with me for four months. He kept me there in the hospital until I healed. And he would always tell me, you will heal. Don't worry. You will be okay. Don't worry. Pray. The man of God who later founded St. Mary's Midwifery School to train health professionals who would later work towards reducing the high mortality rate in the then wanting communities in northern Uganda. We had many leprosy patients. I think even he started a center in Morlem. Morlem Leprosy Center is in Abim district. We started one there, and then another one in Lira, a little leprosy center. And when he found out the leprosy patients are many, he contacted Father Donini. He had done that, huh? that field, he was in that field. So he called him to. Now the people around were saying, ah, don't associate it. You will make us to get leprosy, like that, like that. But I think he counseled them that you cannot just get leprosy by talking to a person with leprosy or, or saying with a person with leprosy. He did, because he, had, he was compassionate to them. Huh? He was feeling for them. That's why he brought them and then he would, they were here. And some were in a little, some were in Morlem. Sister Teddy Abba is a tutor at St. Mary's Midwifery Institute. She is lucky to have worked so close with Father Dr. Joseph Ambroso as an intern and later a staff in the hospital. When he came, he had just come from Lacho when he was brought this way. That very day, uh, Sister Letta called him. There is a mother to be operated, to be helped. So he had to come. I was on night duty. And there was a mother who has come. The baby was presenting by the legs. We call it a breach. So, uh, and it was her first delivery. Now when the mother has reached the time for pushing, I informed him. I said, Father, the mother is ready to push because a primary gravida is a bit difficult to help. He told me, okay, you try. And then eh, I made the episiotomy at least to lengthen the place so that the baby can pass. And eh, the baby was not coming. By the time I was standing, he was already there. He made another one. And then I stitched that episiotomy for three hours. Huh? That was the moment eh, I was with him, the critical moment I was with him. Hmm? It was not easy, but he managed. If this place was not there, let me say health-wise, the situation would have been worse. There would be many deaths because people may not afford to go to the hospital. Those who can afford, they will go. But what about those who cannot afford? It means they would die. At the time of the insurgencies in the region that forced the closure of the hospital in 1987, Sister Tidi Abba shared some unusual experiences and feelings with Ambrosio. The painful journey shattered a vision that Dr. Ambrosio cited. Little did he know that he began a chapter that later ended his life. He wanted this school to grow. And I think if he was there, maybe he would have been having a degree in midwifery in this school. If, if Father Ambrosoli did what he did, it was because he was very much in love with the Lord. He really loved Jesus and he continued to say to himself, I must be Jesus to others. I must always think the way Jesus would, okay? And so I must do my service with the heart of Christ, because that's what we are called to do, you know? Uh, to emulate the example of Jesus who gave his life for the service of others. It's not an easy task. <laughs> we believe uh, Ambrosori is in heaven, so we join him in that communion with the saints. It's, it's a deep, this is a, a very deep spiritual journey where we want to join the saints in heaven. 
In heavens, the faithful believe Father Dr. Ambroso sits in praise with angels. In the year 2008, 18 years after his death, Father Dr. Ambriso is believed to have extraordinary cured a woman, Lucia Lomokol. The 20-year-old woman lost her unborn baby, the Lucia Lomokol. The miracle, as is commonly known in Uganda, is one of the leading evidence that has supported the 23-year-long intensive investigations to venerate the servant of God to blessed Father Ambrosel, a level that will later see him canonized as a saint. After 30 years of diligent and dedicated service to the Lord and to the venerable people of God as a surgeon, the Komboni missionary priest, Father Dr. Joseph Ambrosel, becomes the second Komboni missionary to be beatified after Daniel Komboni, the first bishop of Central Africa and the founder of the Komboni Missionaries of Africa, a Catholic missionary religious congregation of priests, brothers and sisters, that was founded on 1st of June, 1867, by St. Daniel Komboni, and later settled in West Nile and Northern Uganda to carry out religious activities. Good servant to the suffering people. Good servant to the suffering